Are you a computer science background and curious about transitioning into robotics? If so, you've got a huge advantage. In this video, I'll break down three essential blocks you need as a robotics engineer. By the end, you'll have a very clear roadmap of the field. Or it's more like a minimap if you ever played a video games, so you know exactly where you are and you know where to go. How do I know? Back in the school, I started my journey in aerospace engineering. Then I discovered my passion for autonomous vehicles, which led me to pursue a dual degree in computer science. Then I went to grad school. I was young, ambitious, and ready to explore this fascinating field. Today, I'm sharing what I've learned so far to help those of you with computer science background who are curious about robotics engineering. So let's dive in. If you're new to here, my name is Elliot. I'm a robotics engineer and an educator, and I'm here to help you navigate the world of robotics with a very clear vision and confidence. So let's talk about the three main blocks of the robotics at a very high level. First, algorithms and math, and mechanics, and control engineering. So let's start with the algorithms and math, as you're likely already familiar with them. Imagine a robot, and it doesn't matter if it is a humanoid or a car or a drone. The robot is just navigating using stereo cameras indoor environment where the GPS signals are unavailable. Now picture the robot moving in a circle around, say a restaurant. How does it know its position at every given time? The answer lies in search algorithms, specifically SLAM, simultaneous localization and mapping. And SLAM algorithm itself is not search algorithm, but in it, uh, there is a search algorithm. And one very important step in SLAM is called loop closure, which relies on finding and matching the right features in the environment. So what exactly is a feature? In the image processing, features are distinct points or patterns in an image. Using Python OpenCV, you can extract these features, which comes with their X, Y, pixel locations, and their specific index. And this index is crucial for searching and matching the features. But here's the twist in robotics. You are not just searching for a single feature. Often, you are matching groups of features to describe an entire scene. This group matching becomes the foundation of the scene detection in the loop closure. And here's where the deep learning comes into play, a method called superglue. A superglue can be used for feature matching. What makes superglue incredible is its ability to match features robustly even when the images are rotated or distorted. If you're curious about how it works, I've included the paper link down below. So to repo, you need a way of thinking in algorithm and then mix with the physical properties like image features and then kind of mix them together to make a search algorithm in SLAM, for example. And the second chunk of the robotics is about mechanics, which forms the physical foundation of how robots move and interact with the world. And mechanics in a high level can be broken down further into three core areas, dynamics, kinematics, and kinetics. And don't worry too much if these terms are too technical because they are essentially extension of what you have learned in Physics 101. And let's dive in into each one. First, dynamics, and it's a study of forces and motion. Dynamics is all about understanding the relationship between the forces and motion. In robotics, they involve uh, calculating how forces like gravity, friction, or applied forces, torque, influence the motion of the robot. For example, if you are building a robot arm, the dynamics can help you determine how much forces you need to grab and lift a certain object. If it is drawn, about balancing the thrust, drag, and uh, weight to keep it stable and then moving around in the 3D space. And in daily life, in practice, what I always do is drawing out the free body diagram, which literally balances the force on a rigid body. So for example, if there's a rigid body in the, in the 3D space, and there is always a gravitational force, which is weight, and then if I need to make this rigid body, a drone, need to go up, then obviously I know that I need a lift force, the opposite direction of the weight. So that's about dynamics in, in a very high level. And the second block is about the kinematics. And kinematics is about the geometry of motion. So kinematics focuses on the motion of object without thinking about the forces. I know it sounds kind of weird because how can an object move without force? But here's what I mean. As an example, uh, if you have a car and if you have a destination, you know what is the minimum average velocity for this car to reach to this destination and what is the velocity required. Or if it is a robot arm, you need your robot arm's endpoint from point A, X, Y, Z to another point B, X, Y, Z. Then what are the angles of all your joints? 
for the robot arm to move around. So, and you heard about four kinematics and inverse kinematics when it comes to robot arms, and this is the kinematics I'm talking about. So you don't have to really think about the force. Instead, you're thinking about the required angular position, required velocity, and so on. So it's more related to path calculation or motion planning in robotics in general. Third, kinetics, the causes of the motion. So when it comes to kinetics, not kinematics, I know the names are similar, but kinetics is more about detailed force and torque requirement. For example, from kinematics, you know the required angular velocity of your drone propeller. Then to be able to generate this requirement, then what is actual torque and what is actual battery consumption so that you can calculate the battery life of your drone. How long can it fly? Or if it is a robot wheel sleeps on the ground, kinetics help you calculate the friction of force at play. For a humanoid robot walking around, it considers how forces from the ground impact stability and the movement of the legs of the humanoid robot. So to wrap up, kinetics is particularly important when designing robots that interact with their environment in a dynamic way, such as robotic legs or arm walking on uneven terrain. So to wrap up this second block, mechanics, in practice, I don't really focus on this, the definition of the word, what is kinematics, what is kinetics, what is dynamics, what's different. I don't really think like that. Instead, focus more on the problem solving, how they kind of work together, how to analyze your uh, robot as a rigid body. So if you're new to here, I recommend that you can uh, look up a couple of books about rigid body dynamics. Finally, the third block. And I believe this third block, the control block, is one of the most important aspect or perspect or missing link in your robotics project because in a way, I know the word soul is not really a scientific term, but it kind of gives your robot a soul so that you can move around by itself because it has the control engineering's perspective. It's about the completing the feedback loop and then control engineering kind of overlaps with all these algorithm and mechanics all together in one perspective. And definitely if you're missing the control engineering perspective in your background, I definitely recommend that you look up the control engineering. And in more detail, the control engineering can be also categorized into three main area. One is literally control, like how you want to control the RPM of the motor or angle of the joint of your robot arm. And then the second block of the control itself is the state estimation or sensing. So usually the robots have multiple sensors like LiDAR, inertia sensors, and then visions. And then you want to somehow extract the information and then kind of mix them together so that you can estimate your current position, velocity, and so on. And then these kind of algorithms are called common filter or base filters and so on. Now, optimization and decision making can be the last part of the control, but it's still very important. So optimization is literally what could be the optimal path to reach from another point to one point. Or when it comes to decision making, like my previous project, you detect the human gestures and then decide and classify using the neural network which gesture it is, and then make the decision whether your drone need to take off or land or track the object. So that's about decision making. And then the magic of this control is that it comes with the control block diagram. This control block diagram is literally your game changer because it gives you the perspective which part you need to put in your project. For example, PID control implementation. And then when it comes to plant, it's literally about the dynamics of your robot, like forward and inverse kinematics. You know the system behavior that you can design the controller, PID control. And then using the sensors like observer or state estimator, you can actually sense actual position of your robot and then you can feed back to this loop. And then when it comes to state estimation, it's really a large thing. It can be, you know, combined with a computer vision like OpenCV or uh, extract the features and then you can build your slum algorithm in it. So that's why I said you have really a huge advantage when it comes to this kind of implementation. However, to glue all these separate parts into one, this control block diagram is the glue for you. And that is your mini map that you can keep referring to. Because on the way, you will be able to diagnose the problem. You will be able to integrate the system because you exactly know which component you need to close the loop. And that is your main task as a robotics engineer. So I've been kind of pouring a lot of information to you. However, it's actually not that bad. It's actually, if you try it, it's really not that much and not that 
bad and then you don't even have to know every single details of all these topics. Me, I also don't know every single corner in robotics. It's just like this. I do not know every single vocabulary in the English dictionary, but I can speak English. It's just like that. I have this sort of algorithm or sort of mini map or method picture of the robotics in my mind. So whenever I need, I can just look up the specific topic and then I just put that piece into the puzzle and then I can accomplish the project. And, and this type of feeling is really good because you don't feel lost. Instead, you have some kind of a center in your work, in your career. So that's why I really do recommend you can start with the control engineering instead of RS-like tools because it's literally a tool, but it doesn't give you this uh, mental picture that you need to have as an engineer. It doesn't solve the problem for you. You gotta be the one who solved the problem. Also, if you're curious about how to get started with the robotics smoothly and then confidently, check out my another video about Robotics 101. I made it because there are so many people who are still feel lost and they don't even know where they are and where they, how to move forward. So with this Robotics 101, you will have a very solid background like I have said just now. And that's it for today. Like always, if you like this kind of content, please hit the like button and then subscribe to this channel. I'll see you in the next one.